Rouse Hill is unlike most historic properties you may know. It doesn't focus on a single individual or a single historic period, and it's not a recreation, but something far more authentic. When you walk through these doors, you're entering a family home, and the paintings, the furniture, the books, the portraits, the photographs have been gathered by six generations of the Rouse family and their descendants. What we'd now buy from supermarkets and shops, this family would make themselves, from fruit preserves when things were in abundance, to their own butter, cream and cheese. They'd cure their own meats, their own bacon, their own hams, their own corned beef. And we're also very fortunate in our collection to have some of the family's original cookbooks. And they really, really come to life. You can see the food splattered on their favourite pages. So we know what their favourite desserts were and some of their favourite, favourite menu items. In the wealth of ephemera that we have in the house, we even have a short poem written by a guest who'd come here to dinner. Long life to that house on the hill of the Rouse. Is there not everything on this ever-changing earth in that house delectable for comfort, peace and mirth? Oh, the goodly creams and pies, the ham, the fowls, the custard, the rolls and egg that cook themselves, and don't forget the mustard, the oranges and marmalade, the meddlers and the damper, and that opera dear to Mrs Rouse, the memorable Zampa. One of the great things about Rouse Hill House is the way that the collection ties in really closely with family stories. Now, we're here at the family well to discuss one of our favourite stories, and it involves this dish. This is a blancmange mould. Now, a blancmange is one of those lost dishes that we don't find on our tables anymore. It was basically a creamy milk pudding that had to be set with gelatin. Miriam Hamilton remembers her grandmother making pink blancmange. And when she was a little girl, this was really, really special treat. But of course, how would you get it to set? Well, especially in summer. So what Nina would do would be put her blancmange into a bucket and then drop the whole bucket just down to water level in the well where it could sit in the cold water. And of course, that was enough to the make the gelatin set. It was enough to set. Fantastic. They'd turn it out and have a beautiful pink blancmange. What a treat. Of course, Rouse Hill is more than just the house with its extraordinary interiors. Though today we only have the core of the original Rouse estate surviving around us, what we do have contains a series of remarkable farm buildings. These range from the highly decorative stables designed by society architect Horbury Hunt, through to a wool shed, chicken coops, even a slaughterhouse. In our modern lives, we're very disconnected from where our food actually comes from. Visitors to this property have the opportunity to rediscover a life where you literally lived paddock to plate. 